Ron Van Dam likes to treat every listener as someone with whom he is having an intimate, personal relationship. Although no money changes hands, there are fewer sticky bodily fluids, about half as many apologies, and he probably won't have to get rid of your body in the long run. Other than that, it's a pretty standard relationship for Ron. You're listening to The Ron Van Dam Show. The following program is brought to you in living color. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good night. It's The Ron Van Dam Show. That was your choice. Hold on tight, things can get a bit weird, if you like that sort of thing. No one's twisting your arm here. Welcome to the program. Sit down, be quiet. I'm going to do a half-hour show for you. I'll be entertaining you. After that, you're on your own. The <laughs> Lord knows what's going to happen then, huh? Why don't you just consider me your life coach? Send me a thousand dollars because that's what I charge for life coaching. I guess I could have taken the path professionally of being a psychologist, uh, but to be honest with you, I don't really care to hear your problems. <laughs> I don't care if you pay me or not. I I just don't want to hear it. Okay. Uh, Jason Shaw composed and performs the themes, closing, opening themes for the program. Jason is a hell of a guy. Don't count Jason out when you're in the hell of a guy category. Your announcer and comedian and comedy writer, John Shanahan, he's a lot of this show. Blame him, not me. John Shanahan, ladies and gentlemen. Give it up for him. Uh, check out Hypnagog. Hypnagog. Try that out. His, that's his uh, show. He's very good. Nicole Reed, British voice at the beginning of the show. She actually books many of the national interviews that we do. Does some of my social media stuff, which I don't understand. And to this day... Don't even know what I'm talking about. And then there's you. Without you, there'd be somebody else. But nonetheless, thank you. We can all be replaced. Isn't that great? Isn't that great? It used to be that we can all be replaced by somebody else. Now we can all be replaced by AI, artificial intelligence. So now being replaced by a computer robot, that's a little demeaning. What is demeaning of that? Not good. Here we go. Here we go. I have a very interesting guest coming up later in the program. Uh, Christos will be joining us. You're saying, Ron, that sounds like a Greek name. Well, because it is. He is a fashion entrepreneur, and he does a, a live uh, thing, a live uh, streaming thing every single day. And you can buy these incredible fashions at a really decent price. It's pretty interesting. We'll check him out a little bit later on in the show. Shall we check him out together? Why don't we do something together for a change besides just go to a hot dog stand? Seriously. Have you ever been to New York City, to Manhattan? The major draw for me to go to New York, and I go every once in a while frequently, 
are the Sabret hot dog stands. They're, they're on the corner of many uh, New York City streets. There's a lot of them. And they have these steamed hot dogs in a bun with uh, this onion, uh, tomato-y kind of uh, sauce that they put on top that I, I ask for, and they all have it. And those hot dogs are just incredible. And I don't know if they're really good because I'm eating them on the streets of New York or whether they're really that good. They're really that good. Hot dogs are horrible for you. H-O-R-R-I-B-L-E. Now repeat the word. Very good. Horrible. They are full of, I don't know what. I Just the general category of crap. I don't know what they're made of. But I'll eat one now and then. I used to have a lot of them in the summer because hot dogs meant summer to me. And then I went on this kind of diet thing where I decided, hey, uh, here's an idea uh, in my older age. I'm going to start eating healthy. Well, Ron, it's a little too late for that. And then I say to myself, it's never too late for anything. So I've been eating really healthy, lost a lot of weight, feeling pretty good. Doesn't mean I don't get sick here and there. I just feel pretty good. So I don't eat hot dogs every, uh, but every once in a, I went down to New York about three weeks ago and, and had a couple of hot dogs and it was just like, um, I wouldn't say heaven on earth because that's just a little stupid, but it was really good, really good. Hot dogs are horrible and this is a time of year that we eat the hot dogs. I don't know why, don't know what's in them. It's, I guess they're intestines and they shove, uh, crap in it, um, ground up hoofs and dead bodies, things like that. I don't know what's in those things. A lot of sodium, a lot of, a lot of sodium, a lot of cancerous forming drugs and uh, pieces of stuff. Really bad for you. And every year around this time of year, by the way, by the way, before I get into this, before by the way, I'm sorry, I just I'm, I'm all over the place. That's what I do. In real life, I'm very, very in the place. On the radio, I'm all over the place because I don't I don't plan this show. I don't know what I'm going to do. I, the thing starts, and I don't know what I'm going to say. That's kind of the magic of it. In one sense, in the other sense, it's the annoying part of it, but it's what I do. What I've been doing for decades and decades and decades. That sounds like a long time, and it and it is. Anyway, anyway, uh, yeah, if anybody uh, next, uh, say, spring comes to me and says, uh, I can't wait for the summer, I'm going to. I won't hit you because that's violent. We don't do that for a little while. But um, I'm going to malign you to the point uh, of you being totally embarrassed by what I say to you. That's as violent as I'm going to get. But uh, don't ever tell me I'm looking forward to the summer. Because this summer, for me, sucks the high level of suckiness. It's too damn hot. And I can't go anywhere in this country, not that I would really want to, where I can escape the heat or where the heat wouldn't even be worse. You go to Canada, they're boiling their feet off up there. It's hot everywhere. This is getting a little scary. 90 degree weather every day for for New England, that's like uh-oh, that's uh-oh weather. In places where it's like 100 degrees all the time, it's 110 degrees all the time. Uh-oh, uh-oh weather. Tornadoes, storms, sweltering heat. You know, uh, maybe you have air conditioning, but not everybody on the planet does. As a matter of fact, most don't. And this is like sweltering hell for them. Every once in a while, I get the feeling that I actually am living in hell. This is kind of proving to me that maybe I actually do. I'm kidding, I don't. But I'm wondering if I do. Don't come to me and say, Ron, I can't wait for the summer. I love the summer. <sighs> You need to shut up. You need quickly to put your lips together 
and don't mutter another sound until I'm out of your sight completely. Seriously. Seriously. Give me a nice fall day with a nice, uh, cool, dry breeze. Then you're talking wonderful stuff. Heat, humidity, sweat pouring into my eyes. Air conditioning bills, $2,000 a month. No, no. Don't, don't tell me you love the summer. If you love the summer, just go somewhere. Go somewhere and just sizzle your face off and leave me alone. Okay, now. Uh, it is hot dog weather. Uh, around July 4th, if you recall, they had these hot dog eating contests where people raised their hand and say, yes, in order to be famous, uh, I will publicly embarrass myself and uh, shorten my lifespan. Sure. Why don't you shove a couple of cartons of cigarette down my throat and light them up because I, I'm willing to actually destroy myself. That's the hot dog thing. They have hot dog eating contests. I mean, seriously? And this is before TikTok even would come up with something like that. Hot dogs, man. Hot dogs. H-O-T-D-O-G-S. There's nothing more American than a hot dog. And this summer, we will eat over 23 million hot dogs in Major League ballparks alone. That's enough to stretch coast to coast from Dodger Stadium in Los Angeles to Camden Yards in Baltimore. But did you know hot dogs, also called frankfurters, were first created using pork in Frankfurt, Germany in 1852? And hot dog champion Joey Jaws Chestnut set his world record in 2009 eating 68 hot dogs in just 10 minutes. But on average, an adult in the United States consumes 70 hot dogs a year. So maybe it's about time you learn what the heck is actually in all those hot dogs. The most popular hot dogs are either made from beef, pork, or both, fat, and lots of it, salt. Check out how many words start with sodium on that label, and lots of chemicals. Hot dogs are prepared commercially in huge vats where rapidly moving blades grind and mix these ingredients with spices. This mixture is then forced through tubes into casings for cooking. Now most hot dogs you purchase at the store are pre-cooked and they're ready to eat. But people tend to boil, grill, or microwave them at home. And we all know that dogs aren't considered a diet food, obviously. But how unhealthy are they? Well, despite the first ingredient being meat, hot dogs are not a great source of protein. In fact, one typical hot dog only has the equivalent of this measly three-quarter ounce piece of lean steak. Each hot dog is about 250 calories. 70 to 80 percent of those calories are pure fat. And that's before you even consider any of the toppings. Now, like other processed meats, hot dogs are loaded with sodium, which we know raises our blood pressure. Ugh. A 2010 study conducted by researchers at Harvard found that eating one serving a day of processed meat, that's the equivalent of one single hot dog, has been linked to a 42% increased risk in heart disease and a 19% increased risk for diabetes. So does this mean that you have to go cold turkey on hot dogs? If you're a Francophile, you don't need to take this to the total extreme and never eat another hot dog ever again. But my advice is to save them for those special occasions at the ballpark when it's part of the experience. You don't want to make hot dogs regular features in your grocery cart or staples in your kid's diet. And when you do treat yourself to hot dogs, try looking for brands that are lower in fat and sodium. Now that you know what the heck you're eating, proceed with caution. Hot dogs, armor hot dogs. What kind of kids eat armor hot dogs? Step right up for fat kids, skinny kids, kids who climb on rocks, tough kids, sissy kids. Even kids with chicken pox love hot dogs, armor hot dogs. The dogs kids eat day or night. Sad kids, funny kids, kids who fly a kite, big kids, little kids, kids who like to fight. Love 
Spider-Man bites dog, that's news they say. But when kids bite dogs, they yell, Hooray! The hot dogs! We'll be back with our guest right after this. Everyone's doing a chicken sandwich these days, but nobody does it quite like Burger Guy. Introducing Burger Guy's new all-beef chicken sandwich. It starts with three of our signature paper-thin patties and a hearty helping of our something like cheese sauce on a delicious day-old bun. So what makes it a chicken sandwich? Well, every Burger Guy all-beef chicken sandwich is topped with a crispy Cajun Spice free-range chicken beak. It's the tastiest part of the chicken. Science tells us so. The new all-beef chicken sandwich. Available for a limited time. Only at Burger Guy. The Burger Guy all-beef chicken sandwich is available as a meal combo with the Burger Guy metric ton of fries and keg of soda. The Burger Guy all-beef chicken sandwich contains less than 2% chicken by weight and should not be confused with a chicken sandwich containing more than 2% chicken. Consult your physician before eating anything at Burger Guy, ever. Christo Garquinos joins us now. He's a legendary figure in the retail fashion industry, and he joins us today. And um, you've, you've embarked on a journey, I understand, Christos. Yes, good morning, Ron. It's good, it's, good, it's good to talk to you. Yes, a journey, a total uh, journey of twists and turns in, in uh, business life with yeah. my new company. Yes, uh, give me a little history of yourself. Uh, how did you get involved in this industry at all? Uh, well, you know, I, I, it's actually a, it's a long-term uh, love affair with fashion. I, uh, mm-hmm. I was born the child of Greek immigrants from Detroit, Michigan, and my dad was a big fashionista growing up. He looked like um, Engelbert Humperdinck, if, that, if you know what that was. Yeah, sure. Uh, and he was this great singer. <laughs> and so, and, uh, and uh, uh, I you know, had great fashion sense, but I, you know, I was in business in my whole life. I worked for, like, I worked for Richard Branson. I worked for the Disney Company. And then, um, but I always loved fashion. So uh, at some point, I was able to kind of buy into a, a very famous store in Los Angeles and, uh, you know, became sort of like the hotbed of um, sort of something called designer resale. Like yes. I, I started that whole concept of designer resale back 25 years ago where um, I started with 13 fav- uh, very famous celebrity closets and got in the closets and started selling their clothes. And that business grew very quickly and um, led to many different opportunities. And I was able to, um, uh, I was able to, uh, uh, you know, I have uh, a show on Bravo. I had my own TV show on yes, Bravo, which yes. kind of featured my life. I recall. And then I uh, went to, uh, and then went to the Home Shopping Network, which kind of like is what mm-hmm. was my dream to be on Home Shopping Network as, as a child, basically. So I was able to do that. And that kind of like all brought me forward to like what I'm doing today. I was actually on the road pre-COVID uh-huh. and uh, like kind of Walter Mitty style, taking on these beautiful things to small markets. I'm, as I said, from Detroit to Omaha, just trying to figure out my way um, after I left my business in LA. And, um, and I thought I was doing well. And then, of course, March 2020 came, and I was in trouble. Yeah. You know, we all were. I couldn't travel anymore to yeah. the cities. I know, right? Yeah. And so, uh, so I uh, had to figure something out very quickly because I, I, I owed people a lot of money. Things <laughs> 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 I was selling on their behalf. And so, I, uh, so I, I went on Instagram, and I saw this guy named DJ Nice. He was like this DJ, uh, and he had 100,000 people watching. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. And like does DJ? I'm like, what the heck is this Instagram Live thing? And I said, oh my god, this is the idea. I could do like my own version of Home Shopping Network for luxury goods. Yes. And so I went on thinking I'd get a hundred thousand people the next day, wow. and I saw there was eight people watching me. Eight. Uh-huh. And um, I and I, I, and I, I always say to this day, there's five of them were Russian bots, and the other three were like my family members, basically. <laughs> so it started growing and growing and growing, and um, but you know, we've now grown to the number one luxury retail, retail wow. or luxury network mm. on, um, on online through Instagram. We program over 220 hours a month. Um, basically, it's an experience of live shopping. So live shopping is, you know, live shopping is a new way of doing business. Yeah. And so in China, all retail is done, 30% of all retail is done this way. People tuning in, whether it be online yeah. or however they're tuning in, to shop this way. And so in America, it's only about, the U.S. is only about 0.5%. Yeah. And we're leading the charge to kind of change the way people shop. 
Yeah, I, I, I guess a, HSN might have been an example of how live shopping can take place on a television yep. set, but you took it and you made it kind of international and global. Yeah, global and community-based. Yeah. Because, you know, and I think she said it's fun to watch, and I love what they do, but it, what I do is I have this community of people all over the world. We've now had millions of people watch our shows. Yeah. And they tuned in first for the entertainment um, and the community and, like, you know, checking into each other. So there could be up to 2,000 people watching at one time a show, but we all kind of know each other. Yeah. And, you know, while we're having fun shopping, like maybe for, you know, I, I sold a bag that was once $160,000 to somebody I didn't even know. I'm like, hi, where are you from? And she's like, Malaysia. I'm like, great. You just bought a hundred fifty thousand dollar bag. <laughs> How do you want it shipped to you? Uh, so uh, <laughs> is shipping you know, free. Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. And uh, so, or it's like, yeah. So basically, we, we kind of do that. It's a community. It's a community first. I mean, I work yeah. for, as I said, for Richard Branson. And you know, he's the founder of Virgin Airlines right. and right. you know, Virgin Music. And yeah. he said to me once, he said, I'll, I'll, I guess I can imitate him. He's like, Christos, you know, uh, you know, the first day, for my first day of work, he's like, I don't care if they buy anything. As long as they have fun, huh. and so I have always huh. taken that in mind, sort nice. of uh, way of my business. So when you tune to my show on Instagram at covered, at covered by Christos, yeah. um, you're going to have fun. That does make it a community as opposed to just selling. Yeah, I get yeah, it. it's, it's yeah. very much a, an emotional experience versus yeah. a transactional. Experience. Yeah. You, you, so that's you, what we try to do the best and kind of have fun with it. You've been called the Robin Hood of fashion, and your fashion is is very high end and, and, and very up there, but at the same time, uh, as you say, very community and very person to person. Yeah, it's kind of a self point thing. I said I was a Robin Hood of fashion because I take I take from you know, I take in, in terms of like consigning from the one percent mm-hmm. of you know, the population and then I sell it to the rest of the, of the world who can't afford like, you know, to make it more affordable basically to kinda of get things out of people's closets. And now, you know, I go all the way I went around the world. If you tune in you know, there could be a show coming from Paris. There could be a show coming from, uh, you know, from London. You know, from New York. That's all types of people. I've had people like you know. I've had, I just I've had Kathy Hilton on four times uh, since I started uh, selling things stuff from her closet from her home in Beverly Hills. Yeah. Um, so it's, it's all those types of, of people who come on and have fun. I, that, that, I and uh, honestly, my voice is on all the time. Yeah. In these women's households, so my husband, their husbands either love me or hate me because, you know, keeps the wife happy. But also not so happy when it comes to their bank account. So that's what happens there, you know. So. <laughs> yeah, you know, that's like in every household. Anyway, um, yeah, true. yeah, yeah true. this concept live in the closet is uh, it's very captivating yeah. because it, it actually brings you in. I mean, it's, it is what it is, and it's, it's such a different way of doing it. Um, and also you're, you're concerned about the environment and, and, and that kind of thing as well, yeah. right? Yeah, so, uh, absolutely. It's a very se- securitist sort of way of shopping. So, you know, there, there's a one bag. I, there's, I remember one bag, like, that has... Uh, so what will happen is someone will buy a bag on a show, right? Yeah. It gets shipped to them. And then they decide, like, oh, you know, I've had some of this bag, but it's time for me to, it's time for me to resell it, you know, because yeah. it's about, like, you know, cost per wear. And so that same bag will go up in another show and sell to someone else's community. There's one bag that I call it the hot potato bag. It's been passed around five times around, you know, people in the community because people love it so much because it's really pretty rare back. Yeah. And uh, so it's like, where am I going today? I, it's gone from, I know it's gone from, I remember, it went from Omaha to New York, I think to Boston, actually, where you're from. Mm-hmm. And then uh, back to New York, the back's like, I'm going back again. And like, I just, it's like, it's like the, those <laughs> things you see like you know, when you're flying, like the, you know, the, yeah. where the, air, the airplane's going. Yeah. So yeah. I think it's now in, I think it's in South Carolina now. Wow. Time, so. Sounds like a dollar bill that yeah. every, everybody uses. They just pass it on That's to the next right. one. Yeah. Pretty yeah. cool. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, yeah. yeah. So, uh, how, what is it, is it about you that made you an entrepreneur? I mean, because that is the category that you're in. What does it take for somebody to actually turn something into something different and, and, and pursue? Yeah. Well, I mean, I think that, like, you know, I take my inspiration from two very distinct uh, people. Mm-hmm. My parents. My parents are Greek immigrants. We had a restaurant in Detroit, mm-hmm. and, I, you know, the cheapest way of, of labor in the Greek family is our children. Yeah. <laughs> so I started working uh, at four years old, um, and uh, was, my dad was out, was the cook. My mom was out front. 
uh, there's a sign uh, outside the door of the restaurant that said, this, this ain't no Burger King. You get it my way, or you don't get that God darn thing. Uh, so if you can imagine the inside of that restaurant. So it's four years old where, Funny. you know, you know people are ordering steaks, medium rare, and, like, I'm like, they come out medium. It's just, it was like, there was two hours of total drama. And then, <laughs> and then like, you know, we all, like, you know, there would be money in the till, right? And I, I was behind the counter. I was like, so I really learned at a very young age, like, how to really, like, you know, Deal with people. I mean, you're putting on a show every day, honestly. Yeah, you know, when you're when yeah. you're when you're um, when you're, and so basically that that's uh, that spirit has been with me all the time, whatever I do. But the most important thing about like what I did in, during COVID is the pivot. And I always look to like, a, a fellow Michigander, mm. uh, Madonna. The Madonna has reinvented herself how many times over her career? I uh, call it 25. You know, yeah, at least. going from this to that to this to that. And I think um, I've sort of been that sort of person where I'm able to kind of go and and pivot. And just see something and find me like you know this is this is, like in, in, with live selling principles like I knew this was going to be the way of, of life you know and yeah. I um, about how it was going to be in the future and I just I was waiting for my opportunity to kind of make it happen and and you know literally be having my back up against the wall like you know um, during COVID and like you know I owed um, over six figures to people for the prior month sales that's how consignment works yeah. and I had no money coming in yes. and so I was like I got to figure this out now yeah. And and luckily it happened. Wow. And we've grown to over, you know, a hundred million dollars in just four years. Wow! You said something in there that, that, that really uh, really hit me. Is uh, you need to reinvent yourself over and over at yeah. times, but it's still mm-hmm. you. It, it's you're, you're you're it's still you. Yeah. But you're still but you're reinventing. But you're not changing. You're just reinventing yeah. what you are, which is uh, that's yeah. that's a very good. Uh, very, very good way to put it. Uh, how can people hook up? I mean, you're, I mean, no, go, on. Go, on. go on, go on. No, I'm just saying, like, you're a storyteller every morning. You get on the radio and you tell your whole story, yeah. right? Yeah. So that's what I do. I just tell stories every, in, in a different way. So I don't see myself as a salesperson. I mean, yeah. I see myself as a storyteller. Yeah. And so the story changes, but as long as you're delivering in a fun way that's engaging and yeah. authentic, you're good to go. Yeah, I, you have to talk like everybody that's listening. You're, you're doing a one-on-one. Even though it's not one on one, but yep. in your mind, that's what you're doing, and that that always works. One hundred percent. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. how can we hook up with with everything that you're talking about here? I mean, how can we how can we get involved in this world? So it's super easy. Um, I sell along different pro- platforms. It's, mm-hmm. so my website is covetedbychristos dot com. C o v e t b y then my first name. Right. D h r i s t o s dot com mm-hmm. or just uh, log on if you're Instagram on Instagram. The same thing. It's covered by Christos. Covered by Christos. And uh, the show's starting in a couple hours, and you can just log in, and we're on all day long. And great. We've got great things coming up, um, you know. And um, uh, every day there's something new. Uh, yesterday was a show where we had a celebrity closet on, and we had to sign an NDA. We uh-huh. couldn't like stay who it was, so we opened up the show with our with tape on our lips. <laughs> a way to kind of say we can't talk about what's going on. So it's always fun, and, and there's lots of good laughter, and so um, that's how you do it. So just uh, uh, go on Instagram or go to my website, and you can see all the shows that are happening. Great. Covet by Christos. Thank you so much. Yeah. Uh, keep the door open, my friend, because uh, people are walking through it, and we appreciate it. Well, that'll do it for me today. Thank you to you, uh, you, and to my guest, Christos. I'd love to say that. Christos. Oh, it's so powerfully weird. Christos. Great guy. Great guy, by the way. I'll be back again tomorrow with a brand new program. That's not a promise. That's a threat. So join me then, will you? This is where you say, yeah, Ron, of course I will. Go on, say it. Say it now. Go on, say it. I can hear you. Go on, say it. Yes, I will. Thank you. Thank you very much. But until that time tomorrow... I wish you peace.